going to use certain words, and this is what comes to your mind. Stress. Bad for your brain. Kill cells in the memory centers of your brain. Little stress is good because you get out, you get to work on time. Uh, too much stress, it's devastating for your body and your brain. I know you suggest a couple things in the book. Give us one to alleviate stress in the brain. Don't believe every stupid thought you have. It's, it's amazing. They should teach people this in second grade. Thoughts lie. They lie a lot. I call them ants. Automatic negative thoughts. And people get infested with them. And that's what drives stress more than any other thing. It's having these un... Um, challenge thoughts going through our head. So in my office, I actually have a lot of ant eaters. Uh, it's just a metaphor to teach people you have to get rid of these thoughts. And why is the brain doing it? Do, I mean, do we understand why the human nature over time would have thoughts like these? Well, we evolved or mm -hmm. were made in a time of a lot of anxiety. So with tigers and people trying to eat us. So the brain sort of naturally goes to the worst possible situation because thousands of years ago it was protective. Now it's not protective, it's harmful. Hmm. Another word, ADD. Well, attention deficit disorder is very common and it left untreated hurts people. Unfortunately, most doctors in a five minute office visit will give people the diagnosis of ADD and put them on medication without doing anything else. So ADD is real. 35% um, of these kids never finish high school. 52% of them in one study will have problems with drug abuse. So I understand it's important to diagnose and important to treat properly, but don't just reach for the medicine first. There's some studies showing that fish oil can be helpful. Exercise clearly can be helpful. Getting your diet right can be helpful. And if you need medicine, then I'm all for it as long as it's in a comprehensive program to get well. Memory. Uh, Alzheimer's disease starts 30 to 50 years in the brain before people have any symptoms. A lot of people when they're 40, 50, 60 go, well, I have memory problems, that's normal because I'm older. And I'm like, no, it's a sign your brain is in trouble. And 95% of people with Alzheimer's disease are not diagnosed until they're in the moderate to severe stages of the disorder. People wait way too long to get help because treatment works early, it does not work late. And how do we help, you know, many of us now are like, oh, I can't find my keys, I can't find this. What, I, I, I was about to ask you a question, now it's escaped me. What's happening? You're not taking good care of your brain. Ah, I mean, that's okay. exactly what's happening. So I was interviewed by the HR director of Franklin Covey. So Franklin Covey's is very large business consulting firm and I've done work with them. And he's like, you know, I can't find my keys. I'm 53, that's normal. I'm like, well, I'm 57, I can find my keys. It's not normal. And he's like, but I exercise. He's actually uh, a marathoner, which is not really good for your brain. It's too much stress. I said, well, what do you have for breakfast? He said Pop-Tarts and a Diet Coke. No. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's a bad thing. So we and can see immediate reaction. When you say sugar in the morning, immediately the brain goes into a bad mode. It's not a long-term, like diabetes sometimes, we don't see it for years until the onset. But you're saying what we eat can affect our brains almost immediately. Well, just think about it. If you had three donuts in the morning, see, I actually used to do that. How do you feel 20 or 30 minutes mm. later? I mean, for me, I felt like my brain was in mud. And now I understand why, and I don't want that. So make that decision at every meal to eat something that's good for you. I'm a, uh, this is more of a phrase. I'm about to make an important phone call. I'm gonna, I have an important meeting. Is there anything I can jog my brain or an exercise you want me to do just before that to make a great presentation? Or? Well, what the brain also likes a lot is oxygen. So if you are about to have an important phone call, an important meeting, I want you to take 10 deep breaths. So big breath, and then take like five seconds to blow it out. So really slowly. Do that 10 times, and while you're doing it, what's the goal? Because the brain really likes goals, because it can then make them happen. So if you have the goal of the presentation or the phone call, get a lot of oxygen to your brain, and in this way, it will actually settle things down so it fires right and then tell it what to do. It says change your age. What does a younger brain help us? What are the biggest benefits 
of not only reading this book, but getting us to feel younger? Well, by protecting your brain, mm -hmm. it, you, your skin also looks younger and more beautiful there you go. because yes. they're totally connected. Your sexual function is better. See, a lot of people don't know that it's all about blood flow. And as you know, I used to say, whatever's good for your heart is good for your brain because your brain gets 20% of the blood flow in your body, even though it's only 2% of your body's weight, gets 20% of the blood flow. And, and then I realized that it's about your genitals too, because whatever's good for your heart is good for your brain is good for your genitals, because it's all about blood flow. 40% of 40 year olds have erectile dysfunction. That's why you see all these commercials on TV about erectile drugs. 70% of 70 year olds have erectile dysfunction. That should so horrify people. And it's about blood flow. And if you're having erectile dysfunction, it means now you're having brain problems because it's all the same thing. So avoid anything that damages blood flow in your brain, also does to your brain, and do things that help it. Diet, exercise, simple supplements like fish oil can be just so helpful. You are so helpful. We loved having you back on the show. Love to end with this thought. Given your tremendous success as an individual, a doctor, your Amen centers around, now tell us what the four are. So Newport Beach, Southern California, San Francisco, Seattle, and Washington DC, and soon in Atlanta and New York. Fantastic, well we're thrilled to have you here in Atlanta soon, only a couple months away, but given all your success, what advice would you give to anyone out there living out their dreams? Well, the first thing is have respect for your brain. Because if you take care of your brain, then you are much more likely to be successful in your life. And you are a great example of that. Thanks, 30th book you said? Wow, you have a lot of brain flow, a lot of uh, oxygen flow, right? <laughs> Thanks so much and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.